Welcome friends, welcome back to the kitchen and Sunday morning in the old cookbook show. Today we're going to do something out of the Dominion cookbook. Now this was published uh, in 1899 in Canada, the Dominion of Canada, um, as we were then known. And it is a very interesting book sent to us by one of our viewers. I thank you very much for this book. I find it fascinating. Because in 1899, you can see that it was generally, um, in the way that it's written and the way that the recipes are done, in a much earlier time period than what we've been doing from, say, 1915 on to World War II. The recipes are different, um, the ingredients are much different, and the way it's written and the language that's used is completely different again. And the recipes are set out um, in a way that they are paragraphs. Uh, a lot of them don't have a list of ingredients, it just goes right into it and it tells you what you need to do as you need, as you need to do it. So there are two recipes that I want to do today um, that are incredibly similar to each other. They're found on opposite pages. One of them is Saratoga potatoes and one of them is potato chips. Now, um, Saratoga potatoes are what we're going to do first. Now it tells me to take a potato, peel it, and then slice thinly on a slaw cutter. I'm going to use this mandolin because it's essentially the same thing. Now a Saratoga potato is in 2020 uh, what we would buy here in Canada called a potato chip. It comes in a bag, salted, you eat it cold. Uh, in the UK they'd be called potato crisps and I think in the United States they are called chips as well. Um, in Canada it's kind of weird because we use chips to mean potato chips or chips to mean french fries. We use both the American and the British meaning of that word. So the idea is that a Saratoga potato came about um, in the 1850s or so um, when a cook in Saratoga was cooking for the Vanderbilts. Um, and Mr. Vanderbilt said these French fries, I'm not gonna eat these French fries because they're too thick. So the chef with a bit of a chip on his shoulder went back and sliced them paper thin, paper, paper thin, um, and put them out, and apparently Mr. Vanderbilt loved them. Now, um, I've been told that this is a complete myth, didn't happen, the Vanderbilts weren't even in the United States um, in the time period that this was supposed to have happened, so it's probably not true, but it's a great story, and all food needs a great story of mythology, as long as you can sort of separate it. Now, I'm supposed to take these and put them into cold water, and let them soak for a little while. Now, after they are washed thoroughly, you drain them. And then lay them between the folds of a cloth so that you dry them. Uh, I imagine you want to get them very dry before you put them into the hot oil. So, I'm going to lay them out on this cloth, tea towel, and uh, give them a good drying. Now, it says to fry them a few at a time in boiling lard, so let's just take a couple of them and stick them in and see what happens first. It doesn't say how long, it doesn't say what the temperature of the lard should be, just to fry them in boiling lard and to salt them as they come out. Okay, those first one look pretty good, so we'll just keep going. Okay, the recipe lets me know that these can be served cold. So I'm gonna leave them on this rack, a little bit of salt, let them cool down, let the oil drain off, and we'll move on to the next one, which is just called potato chips. And there's not much chippy about these potato chips. So it tells me to take a potato and pare it as apples are peeled and keep the strips thin and really long. So let's see what we can do. Okay, I think I've reached a point where I cannot pare any more off. Um, choose your knife or vegetable peeler 
carefully. Um, this first one didn't work out so well. This one worked a little bit better. And this is infuriating. Um, I feel like I'm in culinary school making those tiny little French potatoes where you take a full-size potato and you pare most of it away to make it look like a tiny little rugby ball so that they're all exactly the same size. Um, so that when they appear on the plate, they look fantastic, but you know, I, I just don't get it. Dry these off the same as we did the first ones. And then we put them into a fryer basket. And then we plunge the basket into boiling hot lard. It says as soon as they are golden brown, let them drain with a little bit of salt on top. Hey Jules. Hey Glenn. Hey friends. So. Wow, you've been busy. Two things, two separate recipes come to the same place with them, I think. I think they're almost the same, although these ones are a little more fun. <laughs> they are a little more fun. Okay. So those are Saratoga potatoes. Okay. Which is what the original name of a potato chip was. Really? The Saratoga potato? The Saratoga potato. Uh, there's a story about the Vanderbilts and blah, 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 okay. blah, blah. <laughs> this is called a potato chip. Um, ah. Absolutely infuriating to make. Yet, I think that looks fantastic. It does look fantastic. Yeah. It's a bit like when you get those haystacks of, of yeah. fries, right? Yeah. So I think, they're the, I think they're the same. You've come to the same place. These are supposed to be eaten hot. Those, it says, it very kindly tells you. Um, that you, cool. can, you can let them eat them cold. Okay. And the instruction is in such a way that it's like it's explaining to you the first time that you, it's okay. You can eat them cold. But, yeah, let's see. <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing, yep. Glenn? Stop it. That's oh, great. There's something about how it's thin and it's crispy around the edge on the outside. Mm-hmm. Mm. -hmm. mm. And of course, when you make them at home, they're not necessarily like, they're not as uniform. No, they're not. not which kind of makes them fun. Yeah. In a lot of ways. All right. Now, I, when I made these, I was having trouble. You um, had a few that didn't quite, uh, it's like the first pancake. Yeah, and I was having trouble <laughs> keeping sacrifice. the oil the right temperature. It was up and down and up and down and up and down. Well, Tastes great. Yeah. It's got all that potato saltiness that yeah. you love. Isn't that what it's all about, right? It's trying to... There's so many to choose from. It's like, which one do I want to choose? Which too, one? Too thin for a dipping chip. I ah. did choose the thinnest slicer part on the mandolin. Um, I wonder though, when you make them at home, if when you ma if you make them too thick, if they don't get they, as crispy. They don't get right? as crispy. You don't have the technology to make them crispy. And with yeah. with um, what I would still call chips, but would be considered French fries. French fries, yeah. Well, wow, this is bad because you know I'll just sit here and. Um, no, if only I could figure out how to make ketchup powder to put on these. Ketchup chips, you just dip them we, in ketchup, don't we you? Could have, that's not the same. <laughs> that's not the same. So, this book is from 1899, and as much as I say, the 1935 cookbooks are... Without instructions? <laughs> yeah. Um, this has very few instructions, assumes that you know a lot, uses a different type of language than even the 1930s cookbooks, which we think of as old language. This is even older. Um, but there's some crazy recipes in there, so we're going to be revisiting this cookbook in the future. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.